archaeologist tells us um, tell us that the the study of the past is a contemporary um, act because we are looking back at something through today. And so that's exactly what also was happening um, with the modernist artists. They were looking at heritage um, and um, for the Iraqi artists, particularly the Baghdad group for modern art, they saw heritage as well as Yahya um, al-Wasati, uh, Islamic art, uh, artist, as modernist. So they, and in fact, it kind of um, uh, helped them root their modernism in their localness through the sort of, you know, um, the, the modernist of, uh, modernism of what they saw in the ancient um, and the Islamic. Yeah, of it's course, I didn't say the whole history of primitivism in inverted commas and modernism and things like cycladic sculpture and Giacometti, yeah. Yeah, as well, yeah. I mean... Yeah, yeah. And, and some of the, uh, those artists actually did study in London and in Paris and, in, and saw what... Uh, modernist European were doing with the ancient heritage that they were seeing, which was their heritage, which sort of cemented more the idea that, you know, modernism is rooted in their own history and heritage and made that connection even stronger. Thanks so much. And so I, I've got a, a, a kind of comment for Vasif because also I learned so very, very much, and your position was very melancholic, but what I wanted to bring up because of my own uh, work on the School of Paris, but also Farah Lissa Zaid and my own trips to Istanbul, is that, um, uh, first of all, there was a long history of Turkish artists going to the Ecole des Beaux-Arts in Paris. Secondly, you didn't mention the Axis powers moment when many German fascist artists, and particularly sculptors, gave the visual dimension to Ataturk's modernism. Um, and then um, Istanbul, as, a, as, a, as not only a place, but a cultural center, you kind of didn't bring in till the very end when, I mean, your story about Baldwin and things was absolutely fascinating. And Les Negres, absolutely fascinating. So thank you. But I did want to say that um, I, for example, attended the former West Symposium in Istanbul, which I believe was connected to a Biennale. Maybe you were there too and we didn't meet. But that whole former West initiative, which came from scholars like Boris Groys and Eastern European artists challenging the construction, the East-West construction, actually had a whole seminar in Istanbul. I can't remember if it was 2009 for example, I don't know. And you didn't really mention the contemporary Istanbul Biennales or the new museum that was built. And I don't know if you find them very imposed and not actually trying to work with the city, but mostly, um, I, only, I went to um, the 2019 one, but mostly uh, people uh, are, are very, very sensitive to the cities in which these Ist these roving biennales or the Istanbul Biennale are, are staged. So, uh, and I have, a, I have a Turkish student actually working in one of the amazing museums there who then put on a, an exhibition of Marina Abramovich recently. So I just wondered, in terms of your melancholic presentation, if there haven't been more recent, more positive initiatives... Uh, yeah, I mean, a few things. Uh, first, I mean, first thing first, I mean, the, there's a mythology about uh, late Ottoman artists and Turkish artists um, studying at Ecole de Bazaar in Paris, but that's really not true. But there's um, a book about it. There's a book about it, it, it that I haven't fixed. read. But yeah, I, I mean, possess. like Osman Hamdbey, uh, Sheker Ahmed Pasha and others are purported to study there. But, you know, when you look at Ecole de Bazaar uh, records, seating records, Atelier records, you don't find any of them. Well, I'm afraid there are a number of them who the have been. Yeah. Huh? There's a book about no, no. it written by a yes, Turkish student uh, at Sorbonne. Is, yeah, I, I mean, the, the thing is, it's best based, this information is based on secondary sources uh, that were uh, invented. It relates in the, to in Turkish the, in symbolism the in the late 19th yeah. century. Excuse me? said there's Turkish symbolism of the late 19th century that I saw in the museums, and this book has been supervised by a professor at the Sorbonne, and it's written by a Turkish student and is based on Ecole de Beaux-Arts records. Uh, I mean, you will not find uh, Osman Hamdi Bey in the Ecole de Beaux-Arts records. I did all that study. 
in the past. I'll um, have to go back to the book and check. Yeah, yeah. okay, I think I mean, we should. I'm, I'm sure you're not talking about uh, Osman Andi Bey or Sheikh Ahmed Pasha, but these are the two, um, uh, um, I mean, two cases that I had spotted years ago. And uh, actually now it's become kind of accepted that, yeah, they were not there. Anyway, that's, that. Uh, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, my, my idea of the, the discussion today is really not about uh, the, the recent years. Um, I'm quite critical, uh, I would say, about the so-called museums of Istanbul. Um, I, I don't think they're contributing anything to the, to, 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 uh, to knowledge whatsoever. Um, they are unfortunately within this, this paradigm that I try to kind of explain in the, in the, in the talk is that they are poor copies of things that uh, that were invented, that was invented in Europe in 18th century and, you know, uh, whatever. Um, so they're, they're emulating models that are actually don't have any legitimacy at this moment. Regarding the Istanbul Biennial, uh, yeah, I mean, the Biennial lost its uh, pertinency for the city uh, and for the citizens. So it became a viewing experience rather than a knowledge experience. Yeah, after after 2009, unfortunately, and we're hoping that it will turn around now. I mean, there are good signs about it. Uh, and uh, the, the former West, uh, you know, I mean, I was I was one of the presenters at former West in Istanbul. Um, um, I can say that uh, it's. Uh, you know, they, it was a Dutch project. They even came with their cookies. I don't think they trusted the cookies in Istanbul. Uh, so and this is this is all I have, all I would say about it. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Okay. I think we have time for one more question. Or yeah, gentleman in the green uh, sweater, and then we'll we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been fascinating to listen to all three of you. Uh, I suppose it's, uh, it's a query that I have in the back of my mind that uh, artists often are, uh, in the presentations that came through, resisting some of the national narratives, especially in Iran, you know, of an Islamic theology or, um, you know, even in Iraq, the occupation that happened over there. Now, to some extent, I feel that religion is such a driving force in the identity of this region. It is used against the region as it is used by you know, the present governments of the region. So the artists are trying to define what appears to be a more secular identity. And the West seems sometimes to actually try and reverse that effort in trying to present these countries. And that is leading to the isolation, to sometimes even the destruction of these countries. Uh, so how does the artist creatively manage that space in trying to resist this branding of these countries into a sort of a primitive version of this religion? What role can they play in that and try and uh, connect with the people of those countries and resist this attempt at branding the countries? Hamid, do you want to take that one? Yeah, thank you very much. That's a very, very important question. And of course, it takes, uh, I mean, very, if I want to fully answer, it would take very long time. But to, to, to be very brief, I think the situation might differ from country to country. But uh, in particular, in the case of Iran, this is absolutely right. I think that is a reaction to reclaim their cultural space. I mean, artists are trying and struggling with that because of the theocratic nature and the ideological nature of the current state in Iran. Uh, but at the same time, there is a struggle within uh, the country, and there, is a, there will be another struggle within the global world. Uh, that, as you very correctly mentioned, there is an attempt to somehow stereotype uh, that sort of uh, regionalization or even country-based based on their past or past identity or somehow orientalist approach towards those kinds of uh, you know, uh, classification, which is very common, uh, and the continuation of Orientalism or Neo-Orientalism. Uh, 
so in that sense, uh, I mean, many artists try to react against that kind of position uh, by, as you said, again, uh, showing kind of another kind of secular, uh, secular approach towards those materials, even uh, kind of uh, subversive through ironic, through humor or humorous approach towards those kinds of classification by pretending that they are perhaps showing some cultural uh, elements, but in fact they are criticizing that sort of approach. What uh, I've just named it, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, I've forgotten the term that I've used in uh, that sense uh, that artists are trying to do, uh, which is uh, not Orientalism in reverse, but uh, the, there is another term um, that I've used that artists are really trying to deconstruct that idea through their works. So, but I mean, I, I'm going to end it here, but not that I talk to add. Um, yes, quickly. But as Hamid said, each country is completely different. I mean, after yeah. all, the Iraq between, the war between Iran-Iraq or Iraq-Iran, <laughs> however you want to look at it, was um, uh, basically a secular country fighting an Islamic country. And so, you know, Iraq was weaponized to, you, to use against Iran because of the uh, Islamic revolution. And Saddam didn't remember Islam um, until the Gulf Wars when he put Allahu Akbar on the flag. And, um, and the, I don't think they even amended the constitution. The Iraqi constitution remained a secular, const Iraq is a secular country because the Ba'ath party is a secular party. And so after 2003, it was the sectarianism that was the issue in Iraq. You know, that um, um, Sunni triangle that everyone was trying to locate on the map um, versus the Shia versus that. So, and that is something that the artist just didn't even buy into. So continuously just ignored it. Yeah. Great. I think May, uh, we're going to have to Can I just add this. just, yeah. okay. just Quickly. online? Maybe I think that's kind of important. Not, I mean, in, in, I, it may be relevant in the sense that, I mean, I come from exhibition practice and I worked with institutions all my life. And uh, what really is important to me is that the, the space of exhibition, the space of art is a place where people come together. And it's a place that sh should not break people or you know, separate people, but actually provide a possibility of their communing. And in that sense, uh, you know, with that thought, how the important question for me is not the question of Islam, but how, uh, how Muslim conservative uh, people visit museums, uh, how they, how museums are welcoming them, why it should be welcoming them, and uh, to create a so to create a space that within politics that always wants to divide us and move us away from each other, whereas the art space as a, as, as the, one of our last bastions of public uh, public space in a place where we come together is is. Uh, should be uh, open to all beliefs in in very clear in, cl in very clear ways, and should act could actually even be uh, uh, positively support some uh, people who have been left out in Turkey. I mean, this is about Turkish case because it's hype. It has been hyper secularized for so many years. Not in the last twenty years, of course. I mean, it's just a different story, but. Uh, and uh, you know, I mean, of course, I mean, you know, you know, we never ask, uh, we never ask a French artist, "Are you religious or not? Are you doing a, you know, <laughs> you know or, or is your practice religious? Is, is your, is your, does your practice um, entail religion or not?" Uh, but this is a question that we can ask ourselves. I think it's a valid question. I think you know, it's, it's, it's important. It's, it's quite important, but it's very specific. Is both Amid and Nada said to each country, each geography. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm really going to have to bring this to a close. I just want to thank the three speakers and the questions from the audience. Um, I think we, uh, maybe a round of applause for everybody. <laughs>